So it's been exactly four years since I've graduated from the University of Michigan. And I think that four years has been an ample enough time where I have fully felt the effects of all the decisions that I made during college. Now that I can look back and see what was really important, there are just a couple of things that I wish I knew that would have made my college experience so much better. And I would have gotten so much more out of college. That's why in today's video, I wanna talk about my honest advice for any computer science majors out there. This advice is split up into a couple of categories and I'm gonna cover the most important one first, which is the classes, the actual education that makes up the degree. I know this is gonna sound so obvious and so stupid to some people. The most important part about college is the education that you get, which comes from the classes. When I was going through college, the only thing I cared about was getting the degree and getting a job afterwards, which are two really important things still, but you forget that the degree is comprised of education and you carry the classes with you for the rest of your life, not the degree. Like the classes and the education is what's living in your mind and it's what's making you valuable. It's not the piece of paper. And so that's why the single most important advice that I wanna give is you should take the hard computer science classes. And the reason that you wanna do this is because your computer science classes are going to build the foundation of your knowledge. What I mean by foundation is that if I try to empty out my mind of everything that I learned after being in the industry, there is this layer of foundation that exists. And that foundation is everything that I learned during college. And the more computer science classes that you take, and the more difficult that they are, it builds up a stronger foundation for your knowledge. And for me, even though I spent the last four years of my life coding in Java and Kotlin, my mind still thinks in C++, which is the programming language that we used all throughout college, which is really weird, right? Like you'd think that after four years of coding in Java, like I would start thinking about everything in that way, but like, no, like I still think about things in C++. If I was solving some kind of programming interview question from scratch, the programming language I still reach for is still C++. It's just like my comfort thing. It's like the thing that I lean back on. And a lot of the foundation of my knowledge is like that. I think about some of the hardest programming classes that I took, which were things like operating systems and advanced objected oriented programming and data structures and algorithms. Those are the concepts that are still the most fresh in my mind. And I wish I took the other hard CS classes so that those could be fresh in my mind as well. For example, I wish I took game development. I wish I took web development. These things, even though I can learn them now, the foundation would just not be there. Look, I love Riot Games. I would love to be a game developer there, but in order to even be eligible to be hired there, I would have to learn all of the game development concepts from the ground up. And that is something that I don't really want to do right now. If I already had that background from college, I would already have that first step of that stepping stone already set out for me and it would just become so much easier to pick up the new things and to be up to date on how to understand things and that's why taking the hard computer science classes is the most important thing that you can do as a cs major now on the topic of classes you need to take all these other things that are maybe not necessarily related to computer science to get the degree for a really long time i despised these requirements like, why do I have to take, I don't know, 16 credits of some like literature, humanities stuff to graduate? But looking back, these classes are really there for you to explore other topics that you might be interested in. And one of my biggest regrets is taking easy classes instead of the classes that I was actually interested in. So for example, I took linguistics and American culture, race and gender video game studies, and I do not know why I took those classes. I was not interested in them. I just saw that they were easy on our course guidelines and I regret taking them because I cannot tell you a single thing from those classes today. But there are other topics that I was interested in while I was in college. Things like philosophy, things like psychology, and things like creative writing, or even studying filmmaking. I could have taken any of these courses and I would be utilizing them so much today. I do a lot of writing, I make these YouTube videos. So things from those classes I could have very much be using today. I traded to have easy classes. Something that I didn't learn until my la very last semester of college is that when you're interested in the class that you're taking, it actually becomes easier than the easy classes. Because the easy classes, you are like trudging through them and you are trying to give them the minimal amount of energy possible. But when you're actually interested in the thing that you're learning, you give it more energy and it really sticks in your mind. So it's actually better for you to take the classes you're interested in, even though they might be harder. And when you take more things that you're interested in and you take the harder CS classes, you just become so much smarter and you understand a lot more things about the world. So the next thing I want to talk about are side projects, because I already know if I heard this advice, I would be like, 
listen, I would love to take all the hard classes. I would love to take things that I'm interested in, but I can't do that and I can't do side projects and I cannot do interview prep all at the same time. To that, I have to say, you should wait until the off semesters to do the side projects. So that means winter and summer breaks. Now there's two reasons why I think you should do this. So the first reason is of course, because of the course load that you'll be taking on if you follow the first piece of advice. Now, the second reason that you would do this is because I actually think it's better to give the side project your full attention. And if you're in school taking a couple of computer science classes and trying to cram in a side project, it is really, really hard to divert your attention into multiple different projects across classes and something for your own. And in many ways, the computer science degree is actually more like an art degree where you have to do these projects outside of classes to really round out your skill set and to really hone in your skills and your taste as an engineer. And for your side projects, try to do something that you are actually interested in and don't do things that have tutorials fully fledged for them. For example, my friends and I made a dating simulation game in college and it was so bad, it barely qualified as a game, but it was a lot of fun making it. And actually it ended up being the thing that recruiters and other engineers picked out on my resume the most. And we ended up talking about that project the most. Also for your side projects, if you can do them organically, that would also be a huge time saver. So for example, if you have a class at school that lets you explore a project idea on your own, you should take that opportunity to make a really cool side project that can go on your resume uniquely yours. Or if you have hackathons on your campus where you can make something in a night or over a weekend, that is also a really good time just to push something out there that is also uniquely your own. And finally, my biggest regret from my side projects during college is not having them be bigger. And what do I mean by bigger? I just mean having them be used by real people and getting actual feedback on the projects themselves. That dating simulation game I talked about, even though I made it, nobody ever played it. If I released it into the world and had to deal with all of that, I would have learned so much more than things that you may even learn on the job now. Making a big project on your own that gets real people is a very valuable skill, and I wish I had done it during college. If you want something more actionable to follow, then during your time in college, just spend your time working on only two to three side projects, invest more of your heart and your time into them, and even invest your money into them. I would never have considered doing that when I was in college, but looking back, that would have been one of the best uses of my money into learning resources, into services, and into publishing the app in some capacity. Yeah, that's all my advice for side projects. So the next category I wanna talk about is on recruiting. And in a similar way to the side projects, I really do think you should focus on all of your recruiting efforts during the off seasons of your semesters. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, you wanna build up your resume before recruiting season starts. You don't wanna be building up your resume or working on your resume when it's time to ship out the applications. It's really just the mentality of you wanna be prepared before the time has come to do the thing. And with preparing for programming interviews, you also wanna do that on the off seasons. For me, that was one of the only things I did correct is that I studied really heavily during the summer and winter breaks for programming interviews. That's when I did the most mock coding interviews and when I studied lead code the most. In reality, it is really hard to focus on doing coding interview stuff while you're doing your class things at the same time. And I know a lot of people who had to sacrifice the class things to do the programming interviews and to get jobs. But of course that was back during 2019 and 2020, which we knew that recruiting was a little bit easier back then. And so today I really think that you should focus those efforts as much as possible during the summers and the winters. And during the school, really focus on the quality of your education. By dedicating the off semesters to building side projects and getting a job, while dedicating the actual semesters to building an education, you are going to be able to touch all the fields that you need to and be able to do a really deep job on all of them. The next category I want to talk about is about time management. And you might be thinking, you have so much stuff to do as a computer science major, and how can you have time for it all? Like you have to take these hard classes, you have to do these difficult projects. And the answer that I wish I knew for the longest time was learn how to manage your time. Like many people say, time management is life management. Understanding how to manage your time in college is gonna pay off so many dividends in the future when you become an adult in the real world. School is really a watered down version of what adult life is like. And I wish I knew that. I just treated college like school and I didn't treat it like adult life. And I think if I treated college like an adult life, I would have been a more competent adult faster. If you learn how to manage your time during school, then you will excel at managing your time 
as an adult. And the reason I'm even talking about this is because I had no idea what I was doing when I was in college. During college, I was really getting out of shape because I was dedicating so much time to these classes. But even though I was dedicating so much time, I was making so many compromises. Like I was taking two hard classes and two easy classes every semester because I could only take on so much load. On top of that, I was staying up every night, super late hours into the night, just working in the library because that was what the culture was at the time. But looking back, a lot of that effort was just pseudo productivity and I didn't really need to do that. I know a lot of people just brute force tons and tons of hours into their projects and to their studies. And in reality, I don't think you need to do that. For projects, if you implement more time blocking strategies to figuring out how to work on things without a goal in mind. And also, if you learn how to study more efficiently, I never learned how to study optimally. I got all B's and C's during college. I talked about this in my degree video. And I just remember that I wasted so much time during college, so much time being on my phone, so much time staying up late for no reason and being tired the next day and then staying up late that night because I was tired and I had to get stuff done and doing the cycle over and over and over and over again just because everybody around me was doing the same thing and you can live life in a much better way and you can also fit in exercise and you can also fit in eating healthier and accomplishing all your goals and getting better grades and taking harder classes. And that is one of the other things that I really wish I knew how to do during college. Finally, the last category about college I wanna talk about is meeting new people and making friends. I don't know if this is well known or not, but I'm just gonna say this anyways. College is probably the last time it's gonna be easy to make friends as an adult. To be honest, I still suck at making friends, so maybe that's why this point hurts the most, but I came out of college with very little friends. Now I met a lot of people, which was really cool, but at the end of the day, I'm not friends with a lot of them. And my friends from high school still make up the majority of my close friends. I don't really have too much to say here, except for the fact that friends can both be incredibly fun and useful. Like some of the friends that I have are some of the smartest people I know. Because a lot of them work in the tech space, I could hit them up at any time to understand something or even to get a referral or something like that. And there's just something deeply comforting about the fact that there can be people in your life who you can reach out to for both career help or just to reach out to to hang out and to have a good time. And also meeting new people is a really important skill to have. And during college, you can meet tons of people in a natural way. I remember working in the computer lab at my university and I would just run into people all the time and just make a conversation with them just because I would see them every single day over the last three weeks just working in the computer lab. And then a lot of those people ended up working at big tech companies. And I could ask for help having them look over my resume or ask them for interviewing tips. And that's one of the things that I really liked about being at a big university and a prestigious university. The fact that all the students around you are really smart and they're also overachievers in their sense. You can just meet these really smart people and they're just all around you. I'm not saying that you need more friends in life, but I just want to give the warning out there that after college, it just becomes harder and harder to make friends. And there's just something about being physically close to people while facing some kind of hardship like school that brings you closer together than any other encounter would. So at the end of the day, college is this isolated time in your life. Even though it's really easy to be like, oh, it's an isolated time in my life and there's no repercussions for anything. Though that college is this time where you can really build these skills for yourself and you can really get ahead of anybody in life. The people that make the most out of their college experience are the ones who are greedy with their education. They try to take the most difficult classes and they try to take things that they want the most. They're the ones who do the most outside of classes, like their own projects and recruiting. And even the ones that just meet more people and the ones that make more friends. Even if you just do a couple of the things that I talked about today, I think that you will get so much more out of your college experience than I did. It really is up to you to make the best use of your time in college. And I wish you the best of luck. Take care.